What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out AEW CM Punk Meltdown, Real Fights, Top WWE Stars, Time Off, Roman Reigns, other wrestling news. There's a lot going on right now. Uh, this uh, video is brought to us by WrestleMania. Very interested to see what's going on with this whole CM Punk stuff. There's been some more supposed uh, reports coming out with him and, and his issues with Tony Khan and AEW and... Yeah, man, it's just a lot of crazy stuff going on right now in the wrestling world, man. We're going to check it out. Appreciate all the love and support. We're going to get right into this including one, Including more about CM Punk's all-in altercation, including did Punk want to fight Miro, was Tony Khan caught up in the fracas, and did Punk nearly walk out on all-in? We'll also look at Roman mm. Reigns' latest accolade and hear what Trish Stratus has to say about getting bumped from SummerSlam and more. You know, that's kind of loud in my headphones. The latest dirt on CM Punk. Topping today's news is the story that still has the wrestling world buzzing. CM Punk's yep. altercation with Jack Perry at <clears throat> Sunday's All In pay-per-view. We'll look at how Punk allegedly wanted to fight Miro, whether Tony Khan was injured, and how Punk almost walked out on the show. Did Punk and Miro almost throw down? While hmm. WrestleMania cautions that viewers take the current CM Punk stories with a grain of salt, as let's you look should, at one tale that claims that Punk almost got into a fight with Miro. Brian Alvarez discussed things on Wrestling Observer Radio. Apparently, there was another near incident when CM Punk came through the curtain. Miro starts coming up and asks, "What happened with Jack Perry?" Mm. And CM Punk is like, "Oh, you got a problem with me now? You want to step outside?" Oh, whether no. or not the Punk Miro incident happened remains unknown. But observant fans noted Miro tweeted what some saw as a dig at Punk. Miro posted a picture of a UK cab along with a message, "Nice UK taxi." As WrestleMania noted in yesterday's news video, mm. Punk reportedly had trouble getting from the airport to Wembley Stadium and yeah. ended up taking London Did hear tube, about that. aka their subway. Did Punk go off on Tony Khan? Reports are coming in that CM Punk's reported backstage outburst wasn't limited to Jack Perry or Miro, if that story's accurate. In an exclusive report, PW Torch's Wade Keller informed viewers, PW Torch has learned Punk confronted Tony Khan in front of others and then in his locker room in what has been characterized as a heated, intense manner, and at one point, according to three sources who have heard about the situation, told Khan he quit and chewed out Khan with harsh phrasing. Yeah, I did Several commentators see rumors about that. that. Punk was already miffed going into Wembley Stadium due to his travel troubles, but it's also being reported that AEW did not make any arrangements for AEW staff to help arriving wrestlers make their way from the airport to Wembley Stadium. It's worth noting that at least one report states Punk wasn't troubled that he had to take the tube to get to Wembley. Was Tony Khan caught in the chaos? This is not one looking of the more too good. The accounts coming from the alleged all in antics is that Tony Khan was caught in the midst of things. Brian Alvarez commented on Wrestling Observer Live that during the alleged exchange between Jack Perry and CM Punk, the two wrestlers got close enough to Tony Khan that I believe monitors were knocked down onto Tony Khan. He was right there and he saw everything and a lot of people were right there and they saw everything. If this story's accurate, how do you think WWE would have reacted to a similar situation? Did CM Punk almost walk out uh, on this All is... In? <laughs> CM Punk's rumored meltdown Jesus. may have come close to Nixon. I'm going to give my thoughts on it in a few. Samoa Joe at All In. The two wrestlers were set to open All In, but a report from Brian Alvarez states Punk nearly walked out before the match. Several people said he threatened to quit and he didn't want to go out for the match. I believe they went to FTR and the Young Bucks and they were like, can you guys open the show? And the response was, we're not ready to open the show. Then they went to the six man with Kenny and Hangman and all those guys and they were like, can you open the show? And they were like, I guess we can. And so they were getting ready to go out. Alvarez added that the situation also affected Samoa Joe's mood. I was told that Joe was furious. He's at Wembley, there's 80,000 people there and he's about to go out and apparently he talked Punk into doing the match. What? With Punk and Perry reportedly suspended, AEW now faces the challenge of whether to book Punk at this Sunday's All Out pay-per-view, which is being held in Punk's hometown of Chicago, oh. or to keep him off the show. What do you think AEW wait. should do? Let us know. Wait, wait, wait. I just have to read that again just to make sure that report. So, like, can you open the show? And so, several people say he threatened to quit and he didn't want to go out for the match. So, I'm guessing did this have something to do with the Jack Perry situation? I'm guessing it would have to have been after that, that altercation and they separated the men. 
he I guess he threatened he, that he didn't want to go out there because the the next match was gonna be uh Samoa Joe and CM Punk. They were next up. And I'm guessing Damn, bro, that's fucking wild if that's the case. A pay-per-view, which is being held in Punk's hometown of Chicago. EW comments below. Hey, first and foremost, this is just bad. If I'm Tony Khan, man, you got to get a hold of your company. You got to get a hold of your wrestlers. This is, it's becoming a regular occurrence that every major show that these guys have or not every but a lot of the major shows or even not just the major shows weekly shows it's not even what the fans are talking about at the end of the day we end up talking about the back scene the backstage antics the 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 beefs and issues that the wrestlers are having backstage that's what we end up talking about we don't talk about the matches even though there may be some good matches and sometimes we do when there's no backstage antics that we hear of. It's literally become what backstage antics is going to happen at this event or potentially at this show. That is a problem when your backstage antics are more popular or more talked about than what we see in that ring. Now to the CM Punk situation. Once again, I do think Jack Perry was out of line for pretty much to find him because he went in business for himself again and decided to use real, real glass after I think multiple people, not just CM Punk telling him, but other people in management telling him, I don't think we should do that. He decided to do it anyway. So that's one. It's a problem right there. Two, if the reports are correct, Jack Perry confronting CM Punk, saying what he said on camera, knowing CM Punk was back there, that's a big problem. Three, the whole situation with CM Punk, maybe he should have let it go. You know, maybe he should have just let that slide or said, hey, Tony, you need to handle this before I handle it. I think that possibly could have been a thing. If that if the option was there and he didn't take it, that becomes a problem because it's now it's like if anyone has an issue with him and Tony Khan don't say nothing about it, then it may be just a, a, a fucking a brawl for all in the back, <laughs> you know? And then this whole situation of not wanting to go out there, if that's true, I hope that's not. Not him not wanting to go out there and have the match with Samoa Joe, which a lot of people are still were looking forward to at the beginning of the show, threatening to walk out. I don't know about that. I hope that's not the case, but I don't know. That, that don't sound good either. And granted, once again, I can't tell how someone should react to other people and how they come at them. I get it. You know, we're all human. But at the same time, like, this is the biggest show AEW has ever put on. And at some point, you got to be able to let bygones be bygones or, I don't know, have someone in management take care of it. Like Tony Khan. There's no reason why Tony's in the back back there in gorilla position and watching these guys go at it and he don't do nothing. Something needs to be done. I don't know, man. It's just... they. It, it's still, even though we can blame CM Punk, we can blame the Elite, we can blame whoever one we want to blame, at the end of the day, Tony Khan is the one paying everyone's bills. Well, not bills, but you know, he's the one that provides them the check. So they should be falling in line when he says, hey, chill this crap out. But he's not. He's so passive. I don't know, man. What y'all think, man? That's, this is insane. Big plans for Becky Lynch? What's next for Becky Lynch? Well, it may seem premature to say that Lynch's current feud with Trish Stratus will end after their steel cage match at Payback. It's believed the series will end here, leaving I Becky so. with an open schedule. Please. However, don't worry <laughs> that WWE has no follow-up plans for her. As WRKD Wrestling is reporting, Becky Lynch is expected to face off against NXT Women's Champion Tiffany Whoa. Stratton in the near future. Okay. As previously Very mentioned, interesting. Stratton name-dropped Lynch during an interview where Stratton referred to herself as the best NXT Women's Champion, apparently forgetting that Lynch never held the title. 
Lynch responded, immediately fueling speculation that the two would clash at some point down the road. Okay. Could Lynch be the latest main roster star to head to NXT? And if so, what will it mean for the women's division on Raw? Yeah, Some fans that's and the thing pundits too. have been speculating that Lynch would be Rhea Ripley's next opponent because WWE has been teasing a match between the two for the last eight months. Which I, I think that, honestly, if I had to choose, let's go with, with that. I know they they're slotting Raquel, but you can you can add Raquel to the list of re opponents Rhea needs to be going against. I would prefer at some point maybe Raquel being the one to the dethrone Rhea, but you can do that at a later time. But I'm all for this Rhea and Becky. Let's get this fucking going because uh, Rhea needs some more opponents, more credible opponents. I'm all for this. I that's cool. You want to incorporate NXT, but I think this is the better feud. This is what people are going to want to see. However, others believe the WWE wants to hold off on the feud until a major event, possibly Which is as far fine. away as WrestleMania. And this is a WrestleMania feud. You can do that. Me personally, I just would like if they're going to do something WrestleMania related, if they can really get behind Raquel and continue to build her up, I would like her to be someone that has a match with Rhea you know what I'm saying? And maybe crown her as the new champ. Because uh, I think Becky's been there, done that. You know, I don't think she needs to be crowned again, in a sense, as a, you know, as a champion. You know, she's been there, done that. So I think I would have that spot be for Raquel. If they built it up right, have people buy into Raquel being the one to dethrone Rhea. If they did something like that, I, I would love for her to have her WrestleMania moment, Raquel. So we'll see if that happens, but... Either way, let's get a feud with Rhea and uh, and um, and Becky going at some point because I would definitely be down for that. A Lynch versus Stratton program will likely boost NXT's ratings, but how will it affect things on NXT if Becky wins the belt? Yeah, will she help put someone over by dropping the belt to a rising star? Or will her title reign and subsequent loss be meaningless, as was Charlotte Flair's when she returned to NXT and held the women's title? Yeah. Trish Stratus talks being taken off SummerSlam. Speaking of Trish Stratus, how does she feel about her and Becky Lynch's match reportedly being taken off SummerSlam? Although the match was never officially booked, some fans, as well as analysts, believe it was taken off the card in order to fit in the WWE's SummerSlam Battle Royal, a match sponsored by Slim Jim. Uh -huh. Trish recently discussed the situation, telling the New York Post, at the end of the day, as long as we deliver, as long as we leave the fans entertained, satisfied, stratified, that's Not what my satisfied. goal is, to come here and do the things that we never got to do. Show them something they've never seen before. Stratus seems like the type of superstar who wants to give back to the business, and regardless of how she may feel, she's unlikely to badmouth WWE. In hindsight, if they would have took that Shayna Baszler and Ronda match off the card and put that on there, even though... I. I just didn't care for it. I would have preferred seeing Trish and Becky out there than Ronda and Shayna. And I was hoping the Ronda and Shayna match would have been so much better. But unfortunately, it wasn't. So that's the one thing I can say. I'd rather them have been on the show than Ronda and Shayna. Because that match was boring, unfortunately. So, Top WWE superstar taking time off? Wondering where Bianca Belair is? According to Fightful Select... Fans of the EST may not be seeing her for some time following the kayfabe attack on her during the 18th August episode of SmackDown. Damage Control beat the former women's champion down backstage, going after the knee that was already banged up following her SummerSlam match. Fightful reports that while Belair will be off TV, it's unknown just for how long. Belair was planned for some time off and was factored in creatively. However, we've heard differing things on how long she could be out, ranging from a few weeks, under a month, to possibly three months. Damn. Regardless of how long Bianca is off, the WWE should use her absence to give another superstar from the women's division some time in the spotlight. And that's fine. The WWE has so many underutilized women on the undercard that the company should take advantage of a situation like this to see who can get over with the WWE universe. And that's fine. They wrote her off TV and she can easily come back and have a feud with Bailey and get her revenge. That's fine. Give her some time off. She... She's been, you know, pretty much carrying the women's division. One of the people, one of the women that were carrying the division uh, for quite some time when she had the, the championship, the Raw Women's Championship. So she deserves some time off. Let people miss you for a little bit. 
Then when you come back, boom. You know what I'm saying? You you now you you're back in the mix of things. So now is the time to do so rather than waiting to scramble should a top star get injured for real rather than kayfabe. Facts. Is Nick Aldis officially working for WWE? Is Nick Aldis working for the WWE as a producer? Fans have heard different accounts, including one from Aldis's wife, Mickey James, that he is working there. However, Aldis recently talked with Nico Knows Best and noted, I can't really confirm or deny that. It's not, it's not nothing official, nothing official. Aldis also commented that no one should jump to conclusions about his future. Immediately, it jumps the conversation to, oh, he's not wrestling anymore. He's retiring. That's it. He's done wrestling. And I'm going like, well, hold on. I'm 36 years old. Another blessing and curse in my career is that I got started on a national, international stage very early in my career, a couple of years when I was signed at 21. So I think sometimes I get sort of put in the generation ahead of me in terms of age. And it's like, I'm 36. I'm very much in my prime. Where's all this discussion about like, you know, being done wrestling comes from? Everyone needs to chill. So that's great. <laughs> Damn. It would seem like a waste of all I'm this. I'm not sure who this individual is, y'all. So y'all let me know. Of working matches. However, as WrestleMania has commented before, Aldis may have trouble breaking out in the crowded roster. Roman Reigns' Latest Achievement Time to acknowledge the Tribal Chief, or at least WWE's creative department, as Roman <laughs> Reigns has now held the Universal Championship for three years. That's wild, Reigns won bro. the belt at the 30th August 2020 Payback event <laughs> after defeating The Fiend wild, and Braun Strowman bro. in a triple threat match and three hasn't looked back. Years, the Universal bro. Championship was of course united with the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 38, but Reigns' title run is still impressive and sees no end in sight. Three Nick Foley years, recalls bro. inspiring interaction with Insanity. Last but not least, Bray Wyatt's Wyatt family persona was inspired by past WWE superstars, but did you know that part of his performance was inspired by Mick Foley? The WWE Hall of Famer recently discussed an interaction he had with Bray, revealing, The first time I remember meeting Bray was either late 2011 or 2012 when he told me about this new type of thing he was working on in Florida Championship Wrestling. He mentioned how much he enjoyed a promo I did in a rocking chair leading up to my big match with Randy Orton at Backlash oh, in 2004 wow. and mentioned that he was incorporating a rocking chair into this thing he was working on. Wow. Foley continued his tale, telling fans on Facebook, The thing turned out to be the Wyatt family, which took WWE by storm Facts. and turned Wyndham Rotunda into one of the biggest stars in WWE history. Facts. What do you think about Mick Foley inspiring Bray Wyatt? Yeah, that's awesome, Well, bro. guys, there you have it, the Wild. Ah, uh, rest in peace, Bray. And is this is this is what wrestling's about, man. Growing up, watching someone, you know, create something, inspiring you to want to be a wrestler or to do that thing you just saw on television. To years later, actually doing it and incorporating it into your own gimmick, into you know something creative for you. This that's what it's about. We look up to the people that we watch growing up as kids and for those who are actually able to turn that that dream of being a wrestler to a reality, to actually being able to be on TV, to actually incorporate some of the things you saw watching growing up and turning it into your own thing is truly special. Because guess what? Guess what? Bray has inspired so many others. There's going to be individuals that's going to Remember the Wyatt family. Remember the Fiend. Remember Wyatt Six. They're gonna remember that, and it's gonna inspire them to want to wrestle. It's gonna inspire them to want to create something similar, have the same type of vibe, but something different, something their own. It's 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 beautiful. It's a revolving door of creativity, and I love to see it, man. So comment down below. Let me know, man. How y'all feel about this whole CM Punk AEW situation? Do y'all feel like he's actually going to quit? Did he, you know, I, the reports are saying that he actually quit. I don't know if that's the case. You know what I'm saying? How do y'all feel about that whole situation? Him, uh, CM Punk, Tony Khan, J Jack Perry, and just the, the backstage issues they've been having. You know, how do y'all feel about all how all those things have played out man but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k and i'm still young speed of youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see you on next one peace